start with vectors as what I'll call spatial locators. <coughs> also, the coordinate system. <coughs> the Auburn plot, specialized plots of many types. Coordinate references in a classic 2D Cartesian coordinate system. We name a plot x, y, so the vector plot. You don't necessarily think of it that way, but that's a way of defining it in terms of there is, you can think of this plot as being defined by a unit vector x hat and a unit vector y hat. They're perpendicular to each other, so their cross product is one, their dot product is zero between those two unit vectors. For any position p in space, p is a function of xy, or p equals px x hat plus py y hat. <coughs> and you can consider all of two space being generated by variations in px and py. So you can generate space, two-dimensional space, by varying those three, those two numbers. That's what an xy plot is. It's nothing more than that. So in this case, this is the position vector. And the position vector defines Cartesian space, or co Cartesian coordinate system. And it's a spatial reference. So we do with maps, right? Uh, or anything, right? And you vary this over all ranges of space, right? You can, it's easy to extend that to three space. And x hat, y hat, to z hat, where px, x hat, plus py, y hat, plus p equals z hat defines that three space. Same thing, varying those parameters. You can go to four space, or five space, or n space. Mm -hmm by just varying that parameter. You can't draw a four space, <laughs> but you can imagine how they can be extended that way in the context of the vectors that are, that are defining that system, right? Now, important thing to remember about a coordinate system, it's totally a mathematical construct, right? It has no physical meaning. It's just, you just put it there and you use it, right? Uh, and even there, there are other, other coordinate systems, or other types of coordinate systems. That are routinely used, that are common ones that are usually used. There are things like cylindrical coordinates, right? And the cylindrical coordinate is the vector r. An angle C uh, and D. There are three, there, and they're also defined by unit vectors. One's the R hat vector, there's the P vector, and the Z vector. And they're perpendicular to each other, but they're basically plotted on a cylinder. Or alternatively, they're the spherical coordinates, right? Where you can think of x, y, z here, but they're not really real, right? But there's r, r hat, and there's two angles, c and theta, that also define that system. And there's another tri triad that can be represented in terms of plotting positions on a sphere. The point is of that, you can choose a coordinate system, 
or you can plot on a coordinate system, but they are still always artificial constructs. They are made arbitrarily, typically, because of the choice of the problem that somebody wants to deal with. So in physics classes, they make you go through this all the time, right? Whether you decide to use cylindrical coordinates or whether you use spherical coordinates or whatever, you have to go back and forth between these different kinds of coordinate systems. Uh, but their choice is just made typically as a matter of convenience of how to deal with the problem. Uh, so some problems are easier to deal with in cylindrical, and others are spherical, or others are in Cartesian, depending on the problem you're thinking. Okay. Now, what does it have to do with anything? Right? Well, 